How is everyone today? Everyone's good? Yeah. I just told my friend Giuseppe I kind of slept a little late. I'm not used to late nights, so. And then I didn't realize this was being recorded and they gave me the Janet Jackson microphone. So I had to change, had to change my slides. I'm like, I can't say that on camera. No. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, Welcome to Innovate, How You Educate Your End Users. Um, my name is Rebe De La Paz. I work for a company out of Chicago called Right Point Consulting. That's our headquarters. Um, I'm going to change things up. I'm just going to tell you a couple of things about me, but not really, you know, my accomplishments or what I do uh, at the moment. We'll get to that soon. Um, as far as about me, I've been a part of education for a while. I started Salesforce in the higher ed industry at a nonprofit, a little nonprofit outside of Chicago. Um, my background is I have a degree in English rhetoric, so I'm a trained rhetorician. <laughs> yes, yes. It literally says rhetoric on my degree. So, and that, um, for those of you who don't know, I originally started in pre-med back in ancient history before they had, you know, health insurance for everyone. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but there's a little story about that. We'll get into that later. I actually always have been a part of tutoring programs. So wherever, whatever school I've been a part of, I've tutored students. I've um, also taken um, graduate coursework in teaching because initially I wanted to be a professor at the collegiate level. So I was gonna teach English writing to the cross disciplines in science and computer technology. So you wouldn't have to go to class and learn about Shakespeare, I wanted you to learn about Darwin because that made more sense, you know, so <laughs> that's, that's pretty much, you know, what I started with. Um, hopefully by the end of this presentation, you know, you will walk away with some idea about what you can do with your uh, Salesforce org because I don't know how many people here have had problems with that. But before we do that, I just want to thank our Platinum Spark sponsors. Salesforce Service Cloud, Squid, Map Anything, and the Athene Group. So just a big shout out. Woo -woo. Thank you. All right. So for those of you who have signed up for this, or maybe you just walked in and took a seat, uh, your end user training is not working. Salesforce is live. Your adoption needle is hovering between give up and what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about you. Like, I was being a little, like, you know, nice. I was like, yeah, okay, we're hovering there, but for me and a lot of the situations I've been in, we've been all the way at the end of what do we do? <laughs> we don't know what to do. But um, it's pretty interesting because you're not alone if you're in this phase. I think for many of us who have started as accidental admins, this has happened to us, or just business people who are like, ooh, Salesforce is shiny, it looks so pretty, I want this. And then you're like, okay, we got it. What do we do? <laughs> and everyone's staring at everyone. They go, we did the training, <laughs> but we still don't know what to do. So, and that's what we found is a problem. So this was my synopsis. It was your end user training's not working, Salesforce is live, and your adoption needle is hovering between give up and what do we do. Join me as I walk you through pushing your adoption needle to success by delivering tr quick training wins and innovating advanced strategies to make your training have a lasting effect on your users. We will talk about strategic burst training, communications using Salesforce, and developing an ongoing training schedule and making it all fun. So I know you're like a little concerned because business and fun don't go hand in hand, but I've got news for you. Business people after an eight hour training session do like fun. You know, they like to get stuff, you know, the whole what's in it for me. Okay, so even if you give them Starbucks gift cards. They're walking away with, I won this card because I knew the answer to that question. <laughs> so even if they walked away with knowing how to actually insert an opportunity and edit it, you're like, okay, I did something good because I know they're never going to have any problems with opportunities when they walk away from here. But I, you know, being the wordsmith that I am, I like to narrow down and pull out the keywords. So the quick training wins, innovating advanced strategies, lasting effect, burst training. I mean, this is a lot. So, you know, let's just, you know, bring it in and let's just move it around. 
because, you know, I just like things to be a little ordered. And part of, you know, training people is just trying to sequence things the right way and make sure that you, you present it in the right way. Because that's another thing with training is after years of doing it, you start to read the room a little bit and you're like, okay, maybe we move this. So you have to be a little agile. Yeah, see, I'm pretty sure many of you should know what that term, yeah, it's a buzzword there. So quick training wins, innovating advanced strategies, lasting effects, first training, communication is using Salesforce, developing an ongoing training schedule is fun. But I, I just wanna narrow it down to three essential pieces. We wanna do quick training wins through burst training. We wanna innovate advanced strategies through communications using Salesforce. So there are some techniques I've used with Salesforce that have provided those communications for me. You'll have a lasting effect when you develop an ongoing fun training schedule. Because once you start inserting that level of excitement into your training, it's engaging your users. So now they're like, I don't mind stepping away from my desk for a 30 minute window of training if I might get to play a game of Salesforce Jeopardy. <laughs> so, you know, things like that gets them into wanting to, you know, learn. And that's, that's something we're gonna talk about. So, I chose these topics for a reason. So, back in 2015, Microsoft invested and did a lot of marketing about this research that said, we now have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. And a lot of people were like, wait a minute, I'm not as smart as a goldfish. The thing that dies after a week, after I bought it for my kid, that's just not, you know, I'm not feeling that. And then it was stated that people now lose their concentration after eight seconds. So they're saying that because we have a digitalized lifestyle, we no longer have the attention span. So everything I just talked about, you guys probably just forgot. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter, or you weren't paying attention. So, you know, they were just saying that, you know, research community found this, you know, a little concerning. And of course, you know, there were peer reviewed people that were like, I don't buy this. This doesn't make any sense. But, you know, according to this in Time Magazine, they said the goldfish was just way smarter, had more attention. So this is sort of like what the training industry started thinking. And they're like, we have to hurry up and get people trained really fast because they only have a 12 second or eight second attention span according to Time Magazine and you know, these, these researchers. But and, you know, there are a lot of jokes and peer reviewed researchers, they're like, this makes no sense, I don't buy it. And so there were a lot of you know, anti, they're like, this is just another myth you know, about shrinking attention spans. The brain is very powerful. We've only accessed a small percentage of our brain. So that's when I began, when I started with Salesforce and I began to train, I started to look at the science of it. And so I went to this guy here, Art Cohn. He's written a lot of articles on cognitive science. He's actually a, and let me just make sure I said that right. He has a PhD in cognitive science from Duke. So Art, you know, is a neuropsychologist, which gives him, you know, even more persuasive power with me, because with the combination of common sense and science, how can you go wrong? You know, and I don't know about you, but a lot of people, they think of common sense, it's a bad code they don't want to catch. And that's, you know, just something I see a lot. So <laughs> it's like, I want you to catch this code called common sense and use it. So please, <laughs> use this common sense. No, but Art wrote a lot of articles. He, um, he's taught and conducted research in more than 50 countries, and as well as in some of the world's finest laboratories. So Art's been doing this for a while, but he wrote a series of articles back in 2014 and 15 in Learning Solutions Magazine. And it was just called the Brain Science Series. And I have those links all in my PowerPoint, so if you'd like to read through them, because they are very interesting in, in the way he ordered it and what he, he revealed in those articles 
made a lot of sense when it came to training and how you train people effectively. Because he's talking about the capacity of the brain for memory and retention, attention spans, all of the things that the training industry should be focused on. <laughs> and yet, for some reason, it went over with, you know, a whole nother segment. So I find when people compartmentalize something and they forget where it originated, you bring yourself too far away from where you started and now you've forgotten the basics. <laughs> and that's, that's what happened with a lot of the training that I've come across. So I've included those hyperlinks and this was his brain science. But he said, if you want people to learn, retain, and ultimately transfer knowledge to the workplace, it is essential that you understand the ergonomics of the brain. Our brain is enormous, enormously powerful. It can remember vast amounts of information. So we need to design training that is compatible with the brain's natural ways of learning. Now this is really big in the whole education section, sector right now because we've gone through all these different paradigms when it comes to teaching our kids. And yet we found that when you go through the four years of college, you leave college, how many people here have actually used what they learn in college in their work career? Okay, see? <laughs> All right. How many of you actually remember? <laughs> yeah, so. But uh, ergonomics was the word I like. So how many of you know this, what this chair is? The, you know this chair, right? It's the famous IKEA chair. You see, it's a stress test. And this is about product and design. So ergonomics literally is the science of designing products and tools in ways that are compatible with people's strengths. So professional training is literally the ergonomics of the brain and studying that. We're providing a pr product and tool in a way that's going to use and be compatible with our employees and end users strengths. So that's, you know, pretty much what I came to at the end of my research and reading and trying to figure out how am I going to get these people to use Salesforce? Because obviously they're not using it and it's driving me nuts. So that's, you know, what I came to after this. So it's the ergonomics of the brain. So that's something, you know, you really have to think about. That's that science of the brain and the capacity. So how will this help me train people? Well, what am I going to do with this? The magic brain formula equals the secret sauce for teaching. So I don't know how many of you have watched cooking shows where you see the guy will go to the restaurant and they've got the famous biscuits or something and she'll show like the bowl with all the spices already mixed and then he'll, he'll put his hand there, he'll smell, he'll go, I smell paprika. She's like, yes. You know, garlic. I'm not going to tell you exactly what amounts. So that's what I'm doing today. I will give you guys the bowl and show you the spice mix, but I'm not going to tell you my formula. <laughs> it's my secret sauce, you know? <laughs> so I need it too. I, you know, and it took me years to formulate that. This is, you know, Rebe De La Paz's secret fried chicken mix. You know, I can't. <laughs> But that doesn't mean I can't show you the pathway to making your own special mix that works for you and your org. So memory and retention. You really have to think about that as far as when you're talking about training people. How many people here have attended a three-day session of training on Salesforce and then they're going, all right, we're going to test you. You're going to get certified. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. I'm, I'm a firm admitter, I will admit, I've failed the admin exam, I think once or twice. And I took that five, yeah, three times, yay. You know what? But you learn more from each one of those, you know, succeeding mistakes. So every time I made a mistake, I never forgot that mistake <laughs> because that was the one that possibly made me fail the exam. <laughs> so engagement, engagement is big, you know, because I don't know how many times I've talked to employees and they go, oh, training, oh, I have to go to training. At least I get to get out of sitting at my desk, but oh, training. <laughs> or you get the really busy sales operatives who stand there and they're multitasking 
while you're supposed to be training them, and then they're the ones who are gonna ask you questions afterwards. And you're like, if you hadn't have been multitasking, maybe you would know how to create a new opportunity and associate a product to that opportunity. You know, it's simple. It's press this button and then that button. But you were multitasking. I'm, I'm not, you know, bitter or anything. I haven't done this for a while. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just, you know, habit. You know, a lot of things going. <laughs> and then assessment. This is a biggie. How do you effectively assess? And so I kind of came up with a little thing of combining engagement and assessment. And it's worked out really well with not just my own end users as an admin, but also with um, nonprofit work I do outside where I teach classes, intro to Salesforce, to, you know, girl develop it. And I use engagement and assessment together. And it's also worked professionally with our clients at right point whenever we offer training because I try to make it fun because we've already gone through the gamut with the requirements and the build configurations and the UAT and they're like I don't want to learn anymore about Salesforce I'm sick of you right now so I got to make it fun and that's part of that engagement but at the same time I want to be able to assess that they understand the concepts even if it's just that you know you keep pushing and it's that ergonomics of the brain you have to keep pushing because if you stop challenging people, they're not going to rise to the occasion. And I've noticed that you know, throughout education, and that's another presentation altogether. <laughs> so, Art was a pretty interesting guy. He, um, he talked about the forgetting curve in money and training, because Art wrote for Learning Solutions Magazine, which is professional development and training. So this, mer <laughs> this Forgetting curve is saying, this is how many days you go by where you start to forget everything you just learned. So Art went and said, within one hour, you lose 50% of what you just learned. So half of this you're going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're writing things down. If not, you're going to forget. Within 24 hours, you lose 70%. And then within one week, you're losing 90%. So all those three-day trainings and, you know, two-day spectacular camps, people have lost 90% of it <laughs> after one week. And then they come back one day, and you're like, so do you remember? And they're like, I don't know anything that happened. And I know you spent like $20,000 on that, and <laughs> didn't matter. <laughs> so now art said corporations spend $60 billion on training. And this was back in 2014. But I'm a fact checker. <laughs> so I like to make sure. So I check art facts. Actually, the US, according to the Association for Talent Development 2013, the US alone spent $164.2 billion on professional development and training. So think about that. Let's do basic, I don't know, math. Within one hour, you lose 50%. You've spent $164.2 billion. So you just wasted, I don't know, $82 billion <laughs> because you've lost 50% of that. <laughs> you know, and then if you say 70 and then 90, you just, that's $160 billion down the drain. You know, and it's, it's sort of sad because you're like, they made an investment, but there was no ROI on the back end in reality. Now there are companies that will tell you, oh, it's a great investment. You're going to have people using your adoption needles going to be increased. How to check your adoption needle on Salesforce, go to your AE. Salesforce, of course, they research and they report on everything. And one of the little known facts that I learned when I was at my org was I would ask my AE, can I have your Salesforce report that you get that shows how much adoption has increased in the progression rate every month. I'd like to see that. Because I want to see what my users are using as far as the product and features we've invested in, as far as you know the rate change. per Because she, she gave it to me every month. She showed me the report that said, hey, this is where you were using Sales Cloud you know, in January. This is where you're using Sales Cloud now as of September. So using these techniques and this methodology, 
we went from a sales team of 100 who did not use Salesforce. So they were using it 75% of the time within six months. That's an ROI you can't get wrong. Yes? It's up to you. Well, they have to look at it because they're in the sales team. Yeah. They have to look at it every day because they have goals to attend. So my request to her was like, hey, when you're looking at it, can you drop me a copy? <laughs> just you know, take a screenshot and send it to me. I just want to be able to go back to my sales execs and say, hey, did you know we did this and all it took was this? and this is where we are now. You know, because we made this small change, this is where your investment has gone. Because, you know, execs, and to get executive leadership and buy on, you have to show them the money. Show me the money. It's that simple. Where is all this money I just spent on Salesforce going to? And show me what you're gonna do to make it so that I'm gonna get more. My company, and it was interesting, they were in the red when I started as far as their forecast. Not my current company, company before. They were in the red. A year later, they were in the black, and nobody knew why. And I'm just sitting there shaking my head, go, boy, this is a thankless job, seriously. <laughs> like, we've got an increase in Salesforce user adoption. We've cleaned things up. And because we've effectively trained people, we went from the red to the black. And it, yes. It's a, um, they get a month, they have like a dashboard actually. Sell, no, Salesforce. The Salesforce um, account executives, or your, they used to be called customer success managers. They keep changing the names, but they have a dashboard. Yes. So what is on the dashboard? Oh, everything. Everything's on there. So I worked for an enterprise um, org, and that enterprise org had 13 different orgs and it showed the overall health and the adoption for all 13 orgs, but it also showed individual. So the metric is how many users are actually logging in and using this feature, <laughs> and then at the same time, you know, their use rate. Now as far as like how that metric is measured, I didn't care, I just wanted to see the pretty picture to show to my sales team so I could say, look at this. This is where we went. And they're like, wow, I guess I will send you the training. Yes. <laughs> now, you don't put none of those secret sauce of all that, right? No, no, no. I'd have to work for Salesforce, and then they would safe harbor me with an NDA. So, <laughs> can't share that. <laughs> so, um, Art also, to get back in this, Art also went to a guy named Professor Harry Rodinger. He does the memory lab at Washington University in St. Louis. And he had a group of students read essays on science topics. So afterwards, half the students had a chance to reread the text, and half of the students spent the same amount of time answering a series of booster questions. So that asked them to recall the information. So you had the ones in the green just reread the test. And you had the ones in blue reread and then booster quiz. And as you can see, test date after studying, two days, it's almost double with the students who only reread it. So that's why I said engagement and assessment is so important. And this proves it. This is the science. I didn't make this up. This guy went and like actually did the science at St. Louis Laboratories, and he's written some really great you know, scientific journal pieces and articles if you're interested. Um, Days after the researchers gave all the students an exam over the materials, students who read and took the quiz did better than students who read and reread, and it's even truer a week later. So this is how you overcome that original forgetting curve. It's assessment. It's a vital piece that a lot of trainers, you know, train the trainer program, they forget. And their assessments tend to be too subjective. You really need some sort of conceptual objectivity when it comes to assessing what someone has learned. And that's just, you know, a little bit of that combination I call common sense and science. It really is. So, use it or lose it. That's it. Really easy. You use it or you lose it. You know, if, if it's not being used, it's going to get dusty. So, 
You know, it's just that simple. So these people here, the engagement and attention span. Art also talks about this guy. I read this book actually in undergrad. Um, took a really interesting course on urban literature and digital technology. Neil Postman, big critic of digitalized life, says it's ruining everything. <laughs> but it gives you, he has some really great concepts in there that really help. You know, you, you think about where you get the information from, and a lot of times the concepts that you would never, you know, conceive to have any type of application to what you're doing, they make sense. <laughs> and this is one of those. So amusing ourselves to death, the public discourse in the age of show business. But he talks more about you know, media and technology and how that affects. And you have to think, we're talking about the ergonomics of the brain. This is that product and design. You need to understand. So if you're building a product for something, you need to understand what that product is going to go through. So you know when you get in your car and they do the dummy test crash, I want them to do the dummy test crash. You know, I want them to put the dummies in the car and crash the car so I can live. <laughs> Same thing for your brain. We need to do some sort of, you know, testing of our own to see how these people are reacting to the scenarios and the variables that are around them. So these are your end users, and I think of them as the people that were like me who are using this system, what are they facing? So, and he also, here's another, surrender of the culture to technology. So a lot of these books I've included in my links, really great texts. I keep them in my bookshelf, they're highlighted and bent and dogged. <laughs> so, um, let me talk about my friend Bob. So. Bob is our end user. Bob comes to work. Bob ends work. Bob gets a lunch. And Bob gets a break. Bob's in a box. So I introduced to you people of Southeast Greenland Conference. Bob in a box. Bob in a box is your end user. The only thing is, Bob's in his box. And you've got people sending him emails. They're sending him training guides, training videos, customized software applications that's going to help Bob train, and classes. But here's the problem. All of these things are outside of the box. Bob is not getting out of his box for this. You can pay Bob to get out of the box and say, Bob, you can go to training. It's going to be paid for. It doesn't matter. In Bob's mind, I start at work, I end at work, I go to lunch and break. That's it. I leave my work day at work. Will I really remember what they just taught me or what they just emailed me or whatever application? How many people here have done an online onboarding session of videos and classes when you started a company? Do you remember anything a year later after that first week? I don't. <laughs> and I'm pretty good at remembering things. You know, I'm really good at my, my memorization skills. So. You really have to like think about Bob in terms of what is Bob dealing with? I mean, if you want to call him Barbara, whatever. It's just, for me, I've used Bob in the box because it's, it's memorable. You remember that. You walk away, you're like, ah, this guy is such a Bob in the box. Yes, because he goes to work, he comes, <laughs> he goes, leaves work, everything. And webinars. I've done the webinars, I can't remember, I can't, tell you, I attended a lot of webinars last month, I can't tell you anything about any of them. <laughs> so, according to the guy I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the neuropsychologist guy, uh, Art Cohn, sorry, Microsoft updates, you know, Mac and Microsoft don't get along. Um, I just want to reiterate the topics, quick training wins, innovating advanced strategies, and last effects. So, that's the context of what we're working with. You know, you've got problems. Everyone is a bob in the box. You know, that's how you have to think of it. Because if you think of the worst case scenario, when you get those wins afterwards, you're like, yes, the small things make, make so much sense. There was no budget for training. <laughs> a lot of people, even though they're spending 164.2 billion, that was back in 2013. Lord knows how much they're spending now, and yet it always feels like 
We just don't have any money in the budget for training. The company already implemented a failed train the trainer model. So I don't know how many of you have gone through this where Salesforce, you have a company come in and they're like, we're gonna train the trainer, we're gonna train the manager, and they're gonna train the people, we're good. A year later, nobody is using Salesforce <laughs> or they're not, they didn't, the manager has left, the good one who <laughs> actually knew what he was doing left, so you're stuck. And then you have a full day of training, that's not gonna happen, because who has a full day? Because you've got Bob in the box, he's gotta go to work, he's got break and lunch. And then remember the adoption gauge fully pointed to just give up. So a lot of people either walk into the situation where they're like, just give up, or they were there from the beginning, and they're like, I just, I give up, because I'm tired. <laughs> I've tried, and I have to do my admin work, and I just don't have the time to focus on helping someone train. So here's my application of ergonomics. I had a service team application. We did quick training versus communication and lasting effect was fun. We collaborated with team leads and team supervisors to speak during their team meetings. So I went and took the time to go speak at their two 30 minutes. They have hour meetings. I did, I said, can I have 30 minutes of each meeting, each session? So they had 100 service people. I said, I just want 30 minutes, that's all. Because what I'd done was we, we went from legacy service cloud to the newest service cloud, not service cloud for lightning, but the newest service cloud upgrade. And I basically told them that, yeah, Salesforce is updating it and I can't stop it. But really, I, I just pushed them over there. They didn't know that. But I blamed Salesforce and they got me what I wanted. So. <laughs> They, and then I sent a lovely little training packet with big red boxes and arrows that said, go here for history, go there for omni-channel. You know, like it was very clear, numbered, and of course nobody read it. So I said, let me take 30 minutes of their time to go over it. And I did a 15, 30 minute highlight of important key Salesforce features that I wanted them to use in the service cloud that I just brought over. So, you know, like shortcut keys. I gave, I said, hey, here are all your shortcut keys. You don't have to click. They're like, oh, what? I didn't know this. It's like, if you read the document, you would have known this. And I just kept reiterating, if you read the document I sent, you would have known this. <laughs> and then I did an assessment time at the end that they were not expecting. So we did three quiz questions on the 15, 30 minute highlight and I gave out Dunkin' Donut gift cards. They were so excited. Like even the supervisors who I'd sent the document to were in it and they were given wrong answers. And I was like, you got the document and you should know this answer. So they were excited, but it was that excitement at the end that made it memorable for them. Because a couple of weeks later, People were reaching out to me going, thank you. They were pinging me, thank you for that because this has cut my call time down by half because you showed me those shortcut keys or because you told me about this history piece, I no longer had to go back and forth between tabs because my history piece was right there in the corner the whole time. I just didn't know it was there. See, so these little things started to take a change in the way our service call center worked. And while it may seem like, wow, this is just 15, 30 minutes, that 15, 30 minutes made a major impact in the way the service team was using Salesforce. So now they were not only using it at the high level that they were before, they were using it in full force. They were actually using other pieces and other aspects. And what did that do for that Salesforce report that my AE provided for me? The little needles started, the graphs started going a little higher. And that was for our service cloud piece. So the little bits for each individual person added up into a big bit that shot things up. And one day result, I talked to 30 end users, two 30 minute sessions. So I talked to these 30 people individually afterwards. So because a lot of times you'll give a presentation and people will still want to take the time afterwards to talk to you. And you have to use that time. Because remember, Bob is in a box. Now if Bob is willing to come out of that box and talk to you, take advantage of it. 
these are opportunities that we often miss because we're going, oh, I have to get back to the office, I have to get on this meeting call, I have a conference. But if you took that five minutes to probably talk to those five people or just talk to them in a group, you never know what impact that may have on them as far as the work that they do. Because they see that as you took the time and you thought they were more important to sit there and talk with them and answer their questions. And that means something. Because now the next time you wanna come and do a training, they're gonna be like, I wanna go to her training. Or I wanna go to his training because they took the time to talk to me. They actually cared about what I thought. And I always ask them for feedback. What don't you like in Salesforce? I use this as an opportunity to create more projects for me. I don't know why I always do that. But <laughs> at the same time, it makes the system work better and more efficiently for them. Because now I'm like, hey, you know, I'm gonna drop this down, but in the future going forward, why don't you put in you know, a case? Or why don't you go and chatter in our feedback group and put some feedback in? You know, and it's because a lot of people in the service support system, they've been told by supervisors not to do that. And it's just, it drives me nuts because these are the people who actually use it more than the supervisors. <laughs> these are the people I want the user acceptance testing from. So that, that's one of the things. So I had an experience to another service team that I had on site with me. I did quick training bursts, communication, lasting effects were fun. So I spent 10 to 15 minutes with each DSR sitting near me to point out high level Salesforce features during our shoot the breeze or problem resolution situations. So you know those like water cooler moments when you just go sit at someone's desk? Every time I sat at someone's desk and they asked me to help them with a problem, I'd show them something new. I'm like, hey, did you know you could do this? And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, let me show you. And so every time I did a let me show you with one CSR, it went from one CSR to five CSRs to 10. And then within the month, I talked to a lot of people. So I leveraged my interaction time resolving an issue to throw out a key training point with Service Cloud. A lot of times we'll go sit there and we'll work on problems with them, not realizing this is a prime opportunity to drop some training knowledge on them. Like they don't realize it's coming. <laughs> but then they appreciate it because they're like, wow, I didn't even know I could do that. Yes, you can. Yes. So, you know, basic office water cooler times, repetition and recall challenge was key. So every time I went back, I was like, hey, have you used that thing we talked about the last time? And they're like, you know, I didn't. I was like, do you even remember? I like, you, I bet you can't even remember how to do it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I can. And then they would go and do it. So little nuances and conversation and relationships you have with the people you work with could be a training opportunity, you know, because we're the ones who interact with them more than training companies who come in, they do the little sessions, they're gone you're really the ones who interact with these people the most, especially when you're an admin or you're working on site and you're with a group. You're the ones handling their problems. You have to deal with it. And for the client, every time I talk to a client, whether we're in UAT, I use UAT as a training opportunity and assessment. So whenever I do UAT and they're going through the user acceptance testing, I start to build my training guides and my training sessions based on how they're reacting to user acceptance. This is a good training point. This is a good scenario to write for them for later. This is a good situation that we want to bring up later in training. So, you know, for the consultant side, UAT is a prime training, you know, opportunity. And so many people miss it. It's just amazing to me. And, but as an admin, your basic water cooler conversations and resolution discussions, training. So in one month, I talked to 16 service cloud users individually, spent approximately four hours total in a month on, on training. Just four hours, you know? So it, it didn't take that long. It was just 15 minutes with each person. Third, sales team application, quick training burst, collaborated with the sales team trainer. I used required field and approvals to launch new custom object. So we launched a new custom object and I put an approval history, I put an approval on there. 
that every time they created one, they had to submit it to their manager to show that they actually created this record. So that was how we got to know who actually created something and who didn't. And then their managers went through and could see, well, you missed this, or this wasn't right, this isn't what we're looking for. So, and then afterwards I turned it off, like 30 days later. But by that time, they'd already begun the process of using the way that the managers wanted them to use it. And the managers got into the rhythm of checking their work. <laughs> because they were so used to the approval histories appearing. And they're going, hey, I happened to look at my list view, <laughs> and I noticed you had some in here, and I happened to go through it. So these are little things that help. I built a visual workflow guiding users through a series of questions. So it was a quiz. It was literally like five questions. It was a workflow, a visual workflow to ask five questions. And then I told them to add mention me and chatter. And I might give them a gift card. You know, <laughs> gift cards work a lot. I, you know, just saying. <laughs> Weekly open office hours. So every Friday we had an open office hour for our sales team. So they can like just come on the call because they were all throughout the country and ask whatever question they want. And they loved it because some of them would get on there and talk about things that others had problems with, but they didn't really want to ask that question. So, you know, just it was just one hour, one hour of time. Even if there's like one person, that one person needs some help. And but we recorded them and we kept them in Salesforce as recorded files so they can access it. So if others wanted, and we would put like highlights of what the topic of discussion was about. So little things like that. We use chatter groups a lot. We created a test group. So our user acceptance was done in a private test group. We had a help and training group where we would post, you know, little training tidbit, tidbits, the documents they need, they were all in the file section. Uh, whenever people had questions, everyone could comment on it. But this also vamped up our chatter adoption because when I started at this company, nobody was using chatter other than my manager. <laughs> I was like, that's not what chatter's about. It's not about you. <laughs> it's about everyone else using chatter. So there's that. We did quiz question posts with gift card raffles. We launched Almond in a sandbox environment. And I'm gonna talk about Almond. It's this free um, learning management system that people really don't know about and is a free unmanaged package on the App Exchange, and it's mobile ready. So a lot of people don't know about it. It was made by Salesforce developers at their hackathon, and it's there. It's free. Is that a Salesforce Labs? Yeah, um, not Salesforce Labs. It's just an App Exchange. It's just called Almond. That's it, plain and simple. You can do what you want with it. It's unmanaged, so you have access to modify and customize it to your heart's content. So pretty cool. I learned about that from Chris Duarte because I was planning to build my own LMS. She's like, before you do that, you should check out this thing called Almond. It's like, okay. So flexible and customizable. Um, I had a fourth experience, full day training session, two hours lecture mode, walkthrough. This was with a client. Strategically asked the end users to perform simple tasks throughout the first four hours. So if I'm talking to you about list views, I want you to go in and create a new list view while I'm standing here. It takes two minutes. While I'm talking about the global search bar, I want you to go in and search for an account you know. While I'm talking about data.com, I want you to go in and find a contact for an account you know. Little strategic bursts just to get them familiar in thinking about how they're gonna use it. Within the first four, of the lecture mode. The walkthrough is just gonna reiterate that piece. So when you walk through it afterwards, they're like, oh yeah, I already know about the global search bar because now you're teaching them terminology. So now they're becoming, you know, it's the puzzle pieces are coming together. Log in, select list view, use search bar, Salesforce Jeopardy quiz mode. They loved it. I've never seen business people go crazy over Jeopardy. <laughs> And I'm gonna show you it, it's a PowerPoint template I have. It's uh, molded out and customized. I share it with a lot of friends. I use it at user group events. We have Salesforce Holiday Jeopardy. We have Family Feud Salesforce, <laughs> you know, with the buzzers and everything. <laughs> Second session, two hours lecture mode walkthrough. Strategic birth of actual walkthroughs. 
third session was scenario based. So we actually did the whole turn your paper over so we hand out, you know, face down scenarios. And we say, all right, we're going to play a little game. Everyone's going to flip the sheet and do the scenario. And the first one to, went to finish, raise your hand. We gave a gift card. <gasps> oh my God, I didn't know we were giving gift cards for this. They were, <laughs> they were excited. And this is a client of, you know, 30 something people in a room who came all over to a hotel area similar to this with desks and, you know, basically did a full day training. And they were engaged the entire time. Salesforce Jeopardy, they loved it. This was a Salesforce holiday Jeopardy at the Chicago Joint User Group. So, you know, you bet your Benny off really had people going. <laughs> Nobody knew about the uh, chief of love. I was like, come on, what's his dog's name, people? <laughs> so, you know, made a dream for us. We gave out like $400 at our user group in gift cards. And you've never seen admins and developers so stumped. Because they were going, where'd you get this question for? And I'm like, I made it up. And they're like, but I didn't even know that. And I'm like, you don't read the documents, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> So experience number five, you got to read the release notes, man. Read the release notes. So <laughs> this is a girl development class I did. I know we're coming at time, but I see you guys are still sitting here, so you're enjoying this. Um, study challenges throughout the training. Highlighted with deeper dives. Study reminder of test acceptance. So I kept telling them, make sure you pay attention because they're going to be a test. So I want all of you to pay attention because there will be a test. Um, ended the session with a quiz game. Follow-up checks via meetup form and email. And I'm doing a trailhead challenge actually for them starting Saturday. So they're going to start collecting badges and they have to at mention me on Twitter. And every time they do that, they receive a raffle entry to win one of two trailhead blazer hoodies provided by Salesforce. So, you know, simple things. You know, it, I'm not sure what company you're working with. Maybe there's a social media marketing company you want to work. This, you know, each one of these experiences works for a different application and methodology. So I told you, this is my, you know, I have my own secret sauce for my fried chicken. But I gave you the ingredients to work with so you can make your own batch <laughs> for your company. Um, Here's uh, the app, so it is, yeah, it is labs, but it wasn't before. It was just almond. It was just sitting up there as almond, not even Salesforce labs. And then there's another one called Learn Track, which is based on almond, and it's free too. <laughs> so, and I have uh, trainers who love almond. I mean, you can create your tracks, you can create quizzes, it's mobile ready, it has reporting. It has different layers of permission setting. It's really sweet. So um, in result of internal Salesforce hackathon free, lightning ready, Ziggy, easily customizable, takes native Salesforce to the next level. It's almond. Um, the next one was Opinium and Learn Track. It works off of almond. It's still in beta for me. I don't know about everybody else, but for me it's beta because I haven't really played with it to the way I want to, but it's there. You do have to sign up for it, um, but it's still free. Trailhead. Anybody here know about a little something called Trailhead? <laughs> Comes with the dev org, all new playground, easily accessible. Not just admin or developer tracks. There are business tracks on there. A lot of business users don't realize this. Blend it with your internal training. I say blend it now before they start charging. So <laughs> because it's such a great application. So, you know, there's Trailhead. Um, resources, chatter and chatter groups. A lot of people don't really leverage this. If you have it turned on, use your chatter groups. It's a, it's a way for you to ramp up um, adoption for your company with chatter, but it also gets them learning about using chatter. Approvals, visual workflows, work.com, and then uh, Almond and Opinium, and then Trailhead. So remember Bob? You guys remember Bob in the box? Remember Bob's going to start to come off a break now because he's going to want to talk to you about training.
Bob's going to be willing to, you know, sacrifice a lunch to go over something that might be, you know, career, you know, ready for Bob. Bob might become a power user. He's not going to think of himself as just starting work because they might actually do trailhead outside of work. And they're not going to think about ending work because they might want to join a community and start joining with the tail store. So now here's your adoption needle. We got this. <laughs> You've added the new we got this in there, you know? And so what you should take away, forgetting curve and memory retention. I want you to take away with that because there's a forgetting curve. You need to remember that. <laughs> you need to remember that. Overcome the curve with burst training and booster assessments. Assessment, assess your people. Attention spans, engagement. Communications, leveraging sales work and social media. Long-term development and continuation training. Challenge your end users. Challenge them. You never know. They might be wanting it because a lot of times people get bored with their jobs because they've been doing it for so long. So challenge your training. Take it to the next level. Don't just give up the same old packet because nobody's going to read it. <laughs> I'm just telling you, <laughs> leverage your native Salesforce training and help, as well as Salesforce tips and tricks chatter groups. I love the tips and tricks because I can just drop in new release stuff that's going to come. Hey, note to everyone and broadcast to all of them who are part of that group. Hey, this is coming. Be on the lookout. Build automation, track demo and demonstrate success. So let's provide helper boosters for end users. So, and before anything, make it fun. Why do I go to work and be bored? And I have this, my name is Ruby, and I'm going to train you. Like, nobody wants to sit there and listen to that. Like, come <laughs> on. So here are my resources. And I told you I was going to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm a mom. I'm an AVID learner, lifelong student, Salesforce consultant, Salesforce Chicago suburban user group leader. I'm an MVP. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, you, I can be reached at, at any of these here. My website, Twitter, community. I work for P Right Point. We're a great company. I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm gonna like have these PowerPoints put posted, so and they're gonna send them out. So you, if I'm going too fast, it's just because we're over time. And I did want to like, I talked too much. Um, it's a company I work for, and this right here is something I just launched with some friends. We launched our own nonprofit called People Empowering People Up Through Technology. So we're trying to bring STEM to um, underserved communities and young students so they can have STEM summer camps because they can't even go to summer camp. And then there's two day like developer boot camps for community colleges and city colleges in some of the major cities. So I do have two signups. Uh, if you want to girl develop it, volunteer in your local city, you can sign up. Or if you want to be a pledge donor or sponsor or volunteer for our Pep Up Tech, we can add you to our nonprofit org. <laughs> so as a donor. So this was a class, this was last this year's class. And actually I communicate with about 10 of them. They're still like contacting me and they're using Salesforce. And that was in February. So it's pretty cool. And where are you paying attention? That's clear. No, it's coming. It's really, it's really easy. Everyone has a cell phone? Yep. All right. So, whip out your cell phones. So, this is a little nifty thing I call Kahoot. Um, we're going to do classic. You ready to join? So get your tel cell phone out. Go to kahoot.it and put this game pin in. It's got music too, apparently. I heard it. <laughs> and once you start to put your stuff in there, you're going to see your names pop up on the screen. I, I didn't even use internet speed. I used my own, uh, I dropped that Wi-Fi and I just used my stuff. So, yeah. I learned about this from the Wisconsin user group leader, but also uh, my daughter. Her teachers use this. It's free. You know, it's free. 
You can't go wrong with this. Everyone in there? All right, we're gonna start. Got 25 players, wow, 27. Just keep going, huh? I've got you all engaged. <laughs> That's awesome. You guys are making me feel good about myself right now. <laughs> I had nightmares that this was gonna be a boring session and everyone was just gonna start sleeping and s answering emails. All right, wow, we still got more people going. <laughs> all right, let's start. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Name all four platinum sponsors. <laughs> you get to pick one. You just pick either the uh, triangle, I think it's sort of, maybe we have to move it back. The triangle, the square. So I think the, what do you call it? Let me make it smaller. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. Wendy's winning. Where was the adoption needle pointed at the beginning of the session? <laughs> Just give up. We got this. What do we do? Or I'm lost. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> They're going to kick me out of this room. <laughs> but I got all of you to stay. Like, this is amazing. All right, all right. You like badges? You like badges? What is the magic brain <laughs> formula? Select all that apply. So select all the ones that apply to the magic brain formula I talked about. Oh, it only took one? Yeah. Oh. That's all right, you're still going to get it. <laughs> still going to get it. Okay. So if you selected one of those, you were good. Which is a false statement. Yeah, who's Wendy? Wendy is, is making it. So which one of these is a false statement? <laughs> Within 24 hours, you will forget 65% of what you have learned. Within one week, you will lose 90%. Within 24 hours, you forget Within one hour, you'll forget, uh, I believe it says 50% of what you've learned. I know they're going to kick us out soon. We're going to go over it. <laughs> Almost done. Sorry. We're having so much fun in here. Yeah. <laughs> People are trying to win gift cards here. <laughs> I should have made it 10 seconds. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Just the last question. Oh, this is getting all situational specific. <laughs> uh, We're going to get the boot. They're going to be like, get out of here. Two, one, and who's our winner? All right. Omid. Omid, here you go. $20. Ash Common Sense. Ash, $20. And we had Steph. Where's Steph? $20. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.